Forney, I'm Anna Priscilla, and I'm going to present the paper, a relational model for playful and smart game design. This is the first contribution of our research and it has been developed inside the virtual reality and multimedia research group from the Federal University of Pernambuco in Brazil. This work was made in collaboration with Professor Philippe Breyer under the supervision of Professor Judith Keller. In the context of smart toys and games, we can see a clear connection between two worlds, that of physical or traditional plays such as kids and their toys, and that of virtual or digital plays such as video games. Usually, people take part of both interactions in an independent way, however, in the context of hybrid and tangible interaction with this integration and reality, and this can bring lots of benefits by exploring the best of two worlds. Now, seeing more closely, we could notice when test beings have playful aspects such as toys, they can promote hybrid interaction independent to be linked to an external device or in a separate digital content. This happens for two reasons. First, the, when the things are statics and when it has many technological components which enable the toy to enhance the play experience by means of interaction. Now in the research context, the smart toys are largely applied in the context of serious games, especially for learning and therapy destined mostly for children and that with special needs. <coughs> now, concerning game prototyping, we found research on frameworks, both for hardware and software. However, little has been done on game design aspects. Our research sees toys as a sort of a game interface. The way we need to fill this gap by focusing on gameplay interaction. By seeing an interface as interacting as a game object inside the game environment. Our research, our research flow consisted of four steps. First, a systematic literature review covering publications between 2010 to 2015, followed by a market review concerning smart toys and hybrid games. Then, we extract the data concerning the aspects and things, including new technologies. And by analyzing this, we could propose a relational model that comprises different scenarios of smart play. Now, during the systematic literature review, we start with the automatic search and five search engines. These are ACM, Springer, IEEE, and Science Direct, and Scopus. We include in upstream terms such as tangible user interfaces, playful interfaces, and related to games such as physical controllers and of course smart toys and toys. Then, we, after the first stage, we, re we excluded the false positives, we made 158 papers for the second stage. We excluded mostly systems that we couldn't find playful aspects on things, such as vans, game controllers, smartphones and active devices. After this, only 83 articles met inclusion and exclusion criteria, then we proceed with the main research by adding 60 papers through this novel of references, plus 21 papers by Dignity in three related conferences. These are H.G. Play, Ace, and Dira. After this, we left with 165 papers for quality assessment, which we evaluate by 14 criteria and a cutoff point of 75%, resulting in 35 selected papers after excluding five redundants. In the market review, we selected 30 cases, including smart toys and hybrid games, by using the catalogue of toy stores, websites and projects of profounding such as Kickstarter. The main target of the systems were for mobile gaming, especially for kids and babies, but we also find cases for TV and game consoles, such as the NFC collectible toys as Amiibo for Nintendo, all the similar cases were plush smart toys for pet management, touch point toys and sumpers, building blocks, and toy cases such as the the teddy bear, which consists of a plush case toy covering an iPad that split the screen too, and then you can see the bear expressions uh, with dynamic and gameful content in the bottom, which kids can interact with toys in the shape of apples and carrots. In that distraction, we sum the market cases with the one that we find on papers, which enable us to define the setup of interaction. So, a playful system consists of a basic relationship between things, people, and the environment. The things can have both playful and non playful aspects, such as toys or auxiliary devices connected to them, as game controllers or smartphones. 
Then those streams are integrated with technology uh, that can be external or embedded, such as fiducia markers or microcontrollers included in sensors, actuators, and connection modules. Then those streams integrated with technology can extract information from people, from the environment, and other things. Usually, this information are identification that can be individual or multiple, position that vary according to axis, and including trajectory, and other recurrent data are proximity, lighting, ambient temperature, and body information such as heart rate. Then, those things process the information uh, and translate and the system translates and some sort of feedback, which can be visual, auditory, or tactical. Now, analyzing this data, we have seen that the playful system consists of a basic relationship between the things, people, and the environment. For our model, we only consider the systems where the main things are toys, and that with, this, with that systems that have fixed rules that we call hybrid game play. We also find cases with free play and open-ended play scenarios that are scenarios with open or negotiable rules that usually the interaction occurs based on actuation and feedback on fees. However, to focus the contribution, we decide only to consider the uh, hybrid game play scenarios. Now, starting with the things, this can communicate by active and passive technology. The things are toys and includes the auxiliary devices connected to them and they can be of three types. There are traditional toys that are toys that need external technology in order to promote the interaction and they can be both passive and active as the teddy bear and the touch point toys. Or they can be smart toys such as the BB-8 uh, from Sparrow that has a better technological components that can detect proximity with the environment and other things and also connect to the smartphone. Or they can be a smart playground that consists of a larger toy as a smart floor or can be a big tower for example or it is about an environment with multiple connected toys. Now on how do things interact with the environment this happens when things create, replicate, destroy, replace, update, extend, and augment real and digital information in the environment, which is called hybrid gameplay interaction. Here, in this spaceship, we can see the, repl the replication. The spaceship is replicated inside the retail environment concerning its shape, color, texture, as well as the information as position and direction. Here, we see the replacement where the Batman toy is replacing the playable visual character in the game and interact directly with the NPCs by attacking them and also suffering damage. Things can also create game objects, as happens in Magic B, where the player uses building blocks to, be able to create beach bridges for the character to pass. And in the same game, the player can destroy the bridge in order to prevent the enemies to use it. In hope evolution, there is a physical hope that is extended through a screen where a virtual hope is connected to a kite. In that case, the game objects consist of the same value. There is a hope that exists both in real and virtual environments. Things can also update its status, as happens in the coloring play, where the paint held by the user in the coloring book is updated in real time in the virtual character on the screen. Finally, things can augment information, usually associated with game rules, as happens in Golan Arcana, where the player uses a smart pen to detect RFID tags embedded in the game tokens, augmenting game status information such as the HP and also the available movements on the board game. Now, concerning only the environment, it can be private or shared. The environment is private when it has access to information including toys separated from each participant and each sharing has access to information for both players. In the absence of environment and people, we, it, it represents how people are located in the environment and they can be co-located and remote. People are co-located when they are in the same physical space and they remote when they are in different physical spaces but also sharing the same virtual environment. In the last scenario, we have to establish some sort of communication between players, as a video conference, for example. 
Now, on how people interact with each other, they can do it by competition, collaboration, or parallelism. In Camelot, we can see the three types of social interaction. There are competition between the teams, collaboration between team members, and parallelism once the children take independent and parallel actions in the game. Some are in charge to build the pesto and order to collect the resources. Now, on how the, pe the people interact with things, they can do it by four general forms. By vision, manipulation, embodiment, and immersion. Usually, people get visual access in all systems. However, in some of them, the focus is to manipulate things or part of things, as happens in Tigli, where the kids use manipulatives in shape of numbers and letters to replace missing information that is required by the learning games. In the upper level, people can interact with the systems by moving the body, and this is called embodiment. In that case, we have Pokemon Gads, where the kid had to move its arms holding the Pokeball in order to get with Pokemons. But embodiment is also about systems that distract their body information, such as heartache, for example. Then, people can move their body towards your things or inside larger things or a smart playground. That's the case of the Tech Towers, where we have four connected tower lads, where two players compete. And in the game, during the gameplay, a lad ball is transferred from one tower to another, and then one player has to protect it from the water that's trying to catch it. That way, the player moves its body towards to the tower and by running from one to another inside a connected environment. And in order to promote interaction with things, people make use of technology, and this can be by displays, handheld devices, a wearable, and the Internet of Things. Displays can be by screen, as we've seen in Skylanders and many other examples that I have already shown, but it's also about display with LEDs as well. Uh, the handheld devices can be the game controllers or the toys itself. As in this case here, we have this lightsaber. This is a game inspired by Star Wars, where the player fights with a drone by the flapping shoots. So he uses the sword to protect his body, and the drone detects it, and then if he can defend it, he can reflect the shoot. And to have the detection, the Wuzia wear a blue hope that can be defined by some sort of a wearable. But wearable can include sensors that track body information. In the last scenario, we have the foamy boons. They are connected to the iPads and also connected to each other once they can speak and learn their names. And this is the case of IoT that we can say the Internet of Toys. Finally, we have noticed that the interaction concerning the things and the environment consists of a physical domain. And the interaction concerning all the people consists of a social domain. And this is our view model. Now, to conclude, we applied the model to extract the systems that we found in the review, and one of them was the Asian Vaders. It chooses the one to show because it explores larger parts of our model, as it does consist of a smart playground with co-located and remote uh, players, and has a wearable technology as the smart sleeper, sleepers that are used to identification, and the displays by LED that augment the HP, and also the user uh, holds handheld devices to create laser shots on the floor. But the module can be used to describe any of the systems that we collected, even with more or less parts of them. Uh, in conclusion, we could structure a relational model that comprised both academy and market scenarios, and we are able to identify interactive patterns for hybrid gameplay, and for future rework, we intend to prototype games based on this interactive patterns and also to apply the model with students to the, in the creative process of hybrid games, intervening in the process of ideation, prototyping and evaluation. In this case, the last four kids are already in progress. We applied this with grad and post-graduation post students and they used six, six different prototypes and we just finished the class one week before the conference. I developed some of the pictures of the, the prototypes if you're interested to see during the questions. But it's just thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Very interesting presentation. Uh, questions, please.
mention the images of the prototypes? Okay, I can show it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the prototypes that we built. Or we, as I said, we use the we use the model to in the class with post graduate and graduation students. Uh, the first one is augmented RPG. Uh, is for all the post graduation students. And that game is based on paper RPG. So we have a master console where we, the, the master define the map of the game that is replicated for the other users. And they interact with toys, uh, with touch points to play the, the level that the master defined. Uh, the middle one is the bad monster. It's a connected game where you are a monster destroying the city, basically. But you wear a glove with haptic device, uh, with haptic feedback, so it vibrates when you destroy things, and also has legs when you use power ups, such like laser eyes. And the third and the top is the Kabika. It's a puzzle quest game where you use a hubic cube to control the characters in the game. Uh, it's a really interesting one actually. So you can move, you can attack, you can defend uh, by using the hubic cube. Uh, the, the one is the game based on in the hole in the wall, the Japanese game, where you have to make a pose to go through a wall, so you do it with the toy, and if you lose, it definitely, like, it, there is a, 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 a small toy that put here, you know, the toy like uh, falling in the face in the floor, and there are buttons that you can use power-ups. And we have this game with uh, toys and cards to the power-ups and uh, a mental board game with small ships that are connected to your smartphones and then you can get private and shared information. Uh, yes, well that was the prototypes. Any, uh, any other questions, please? Mm -hmm. no? Thank you.